I'm here with actor Davi Santos, who most recently, at least airing-wise, was in CBS All Access's Tell Me a Story. Yes. Before we talk about that, why don't we talk a little bit about how you came into acting and, you know, when did it hit you that this is what you wanted to do as a career? Mm. I was in elementary school and we were doing uh, a fifth grade uh, musical that the teachers had made up. Mm -hmm. And um, my parents saw that I really enjoyed it and I did. And it was such a different vibe. If you've never been on stage before to suddenly do it, I think mm -hmm. it's something everyone should do just for the experience, what you learn about yourself. Right. And uh, I was one week into my zone school in Queens and my parents discovered that there was a performing arts middle school in uh, Midtown Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So that week I had to find a monologue just like learn what that even was yeah. and prepare a song and uh, I auditioned and got in to PPAS. That's awesome. Uh, when you were going to that school, did you think that you were going to stay in New York and focus primarily on theater? Did you already have it in your head you want to do film, television, and theater? Like, What was mm -hmm. your overall thought process of what you wanted to yeah, there was no discrimination in terms of acting. Yeah. You know? <laughs> as long it, as I was getting paid, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, yeah, as long as you get to do it. Do you know, it especially yeah. at that age, it's just it's so fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I had less. I've always had really less experiences personally watching TV. Mm -hmm. Most of most of what I watch, consume personally, is, is film and, and theater. Right. So that's what I was gravitating towards. And especially living in New York, mm -hmm. there's so many opportunities to to do the Fringe festivals and right. like Samuel French, and there's yep. all these entry uh, great ways of getting hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know what pilot season was. I remember when right. I was uh, in s sixth grade, mm -hmm. and I was um, in school with Andrea Bowen, okay. who, uh, and she was like, you know, we were all like 12, and she's like, yeah, Davi, so I'm not gonna come back in January, because I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to LA for pilot season. And then it was just like these words, of like, what does that even remotely even mean? So I had no clue, yeah. zero clue about the industry going in. Correct me if I'm wrong, she was on Desperate Housewives. Correct, right? yeah, she, yeah, that Andrea, yeah. So, um, are you bicoastal now? Yeah, very you are. much. So, yeah. are you interested in pursuing theater now that you're here, that you can be here part of the time? Mm -hmm. I always find it in a wonderful treat whenever I can jump back onto the stage. Yeah, and I feel like you know the rehearsal process and everything is, is such a great, refreshing cultivation. The the teamwork, you mm -hmm. know, um, really getting to talk about story and and it, yeah, it, you got to sort of go back to your roots. Right. And you should always apply it, obviously, with every job, every experience, but um, there's nothing quite like theater. No, because you have that immediate reaction and the immediate connection. Yeah, having when you're filming audience. for television, you're looking at the camera, you don't know what the audience is going to feel. Yeah. You hope you can figure out what they'll feel based on a performance, but right. at yeah. least in theater, you can look down and say, oh, wow, they're really affected, or oh, they're on their phone, thank you so much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, staring. Yeah. <laughs> Unwrapping papers and candies and all kinds of stuff. It was like Patti LuPone that was like, I'll wait. Yeah. I'll wait. <laughs> you don't mess with that. Yeah, I'll wait a couple of years before stopping a show. There you go. <laughs> so talk a little bit about when you decided you wanted to get into television. I know when you went on the show, Don't Trust the Girl. The, the B in Apartment 23. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know if I, I knew that was the, the actual title. title. The longest <laughs> title, and it's like, do you bleep out the B part? But yeah. I think they did, so. That was something that you booked one day and had to fly out the next, right? Yeah, I was in uh, college and... Um, I had made the self tape with uh, a friend in her Forest Hills apartment in mm -hmm. Queens, and yeah, it was just one of those phone calls. My manager called me. It was like 11:30 at night, and he's like, "Oh, you have to. Uh, what are you doing Wednesday? You, yeah. have to, you have to get on a plane. And you have to fly to LA and shoot." Which was also something that, like, even though I was self taping, I wasn't really expecting to go to LA like mm -hmm. the next week or anything. You know, there's so many tapes that one goes through. At that point, um, you weren't by coastal, right? You were just focused. Yeah, here at in that York. point, I was just doing college, and I was on and working here, commercial print, modeling, doing um, the theater, and and a couple of like independent work here as well. But and then um, when that happened, that sort of like sp springboarded into like even uh, a mainly television focus, mm -hmm. and left commercial print behind and put those my eggs in that basket. Now, uh, one of your longest running gigs, you were actually a part of the Power Rangers yeah. series. That must be that must have been exciting for you. Number one, because you were gonna be in a pop culture, like iconic show that's gonna be popular forever. Mm -hmm. Um, which probably lent itself to a whole, you know, plethora of experiences for you. What was it like filming the show and and then, you know, being recognized all over the world for it? 
it was a blast. I mean, the fact that we were shooting it in New Zealand mm -hmm. was life changing, and I didn't expect to have a learning curve for actually getting used to being away because yeah. I love to travel and like throw me into any exotic new place, and I'm like alive. Mm -hmm. But uh, it took a, a hot second, you know, to really isolate, you know, and and to be in this new place. But I mean, after being there for eight months, filming yeah. 33 episodes, two seasons basically back to back. Oh, I you did it all at one time? Yeah. Yeah, we had like a Christmas break to like fly yeah. out and have two weeks to like do whatever. Speaking of travel, didn't you just travel uh, somewhere for quite a, a long yeah, amount in, of time? I was in Asia just, um, I was going through Asia. Uh, one of my, my good friends is the head of the Diplomatic Academy of Washington. And so we basically had like a Diplo tour where we get to visit different embassies and we get to learn about the, like the geopolitical um, what's happening in, in these different countries wow. while also enjoying the places themselves. Yeah, that must have been amazing. Yeah, I love it. It's a great way to learn about the world, learn how um, so connected we are as mm -hmm. people, and it really opens my eyes every time. So I got to do three weeks of that and then found out about 47 meters down and then had to book a flight early and go to straight to the Caribbean, which was also great. It's like, all right, finish filming for six months, right. enjoy Asia for three weeks, and then top it off with um, filming uh, 47 meters in the Caribbean. Before we get to that project, yeah, yeah, I guess we'll uh, bring up Tell Me a Story. Oh, of course. Ten episode series that was released one episode a week on CBS All Access. Yes. It's now ended, so you can binge watch all ten episodes, which, after watching the entire series, I would recommend doing it that way because you don't have to wait a week in between. And, yeah. like, it's the kind of show you want to just see immediately after it, you know, immediately after the first episode airs, you want to just keep going. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like playing Gabe and, and just the whole whole craziness of the show itself uh, it was i mean i was also flying on the, the end of my coat like reading every script and mm -hmm. like oh my gosh this is how it ends um it was exciting it was really exciting and i kind of just wanted to bring as much i mean i, I, mean, I want to say honesty even though these situ the situations and circumstances are so kind of over the top and, and intense but um there there's what's really wonderful and creepy about the show is kind of how it parallels or echoes a lot of um, both political as well as social circumstances mm -hmm. that are happening in our world, in our real world, you know? So it, I felt like it was always important to connect between like what was happening in the script and then also like what's actually going on in the world. I kind, of, I kind of feel like Gabe kind of had the biggest heart on the show. Yeah, ironically, um, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The drug Based taking the club monster. Yeah, <laughs> murder, you know? well, yeah, murder, accidentally, accidental murder. Accidentally murder. Yeah. yeah. When you were going along through the script and you saw people in your storyline getting killed off, did you get concerned you weren't going to make it through all ten episodes, or or did you just take it take it as it came and just enjoy the ride? Uh, you know, we receive one-liners, right? Like mm -hmm. um, when they surmise our scenes and they tell us what we're going to film, and they they basically summarize it with that one line. Mm -hmm. So there was a one-liner that I got uh, for one of the episodes, and it was uh, Gabe gets whacked. And my heart sunk so far down because yeah. actually I was privy to the idea that we were actually one of the, the redeeming stories. You know, not everyone has a happy ending in this. Definitely not. So when I read that, though, I was like, <gasps> and then I realized it was, like he was literally getting whacked in the face yeah. with, <laughs> with a gun. So I was like, oh, okay, great. Much better. But it, it kind of, for me, it was like the demonstration that you never really know what's going to happen, you know? And, um, and sometimes they use it to their benefit to like mm -hmm. bring, uh, put actors in like a surprising situation and you get certain results. So I didn't, I knew, but I, I knew that anything could change really. Yeah. Well, what I liked about your storyline in particular was that it started off in one direction when he got mixed up with his sister, kind of went in a different direction. Mm. Then you go to see your, your mom and she kind of turns in like it was bad enough you weren't there for me growing up and then you turn me in because you think you're doing me a favor and then... There were so many twists and turns trying to, you know, when, once you got arrested and, and what happened after that. What was it like? Just it was so much crammed into 10 episodes. Just being on my toes always as to what was the story that we were telling and mm -hmm. um, what did we just learn? Because I was learning with the audience, basically, you know, and of course I was given, oh, this is what happens to them. Mm -hmm. But it was every episode where they kind of, where we kind of uncover their past. Yeah. Now we start to understand why the rivalry between Gabe and Hannah and what's the beef with their parents and what was lost and who died and why right. are they, why is everything so chaotic? So uh, it was just great to just like learn from the situation and then, f and assume like, oh yeah, so this whole show is going to be about like 
going like the the, the club world and mm-hmm. like the drugs and the murder and paranoia, then like you said, all of a sudden we're out of New York City, you know. Right. And so there were so many different turns, and it felt like I was stepping into different shows within shows. Yeah. Which in a way is how life works. Right. You know. So it was it was rewarding. And you had, uh, in the last few episodes, spent a good deal of time being tortured. Yeah. And you know, it was it was. Rewarding to see your relief of, oh, we're going to get out of this, and then you end up getting re-kidnapped yeah. by this so wonderful, close. nice lady who was going to going to help you, and, you know, it was just every episode, something new happened. What was it like being, like, chained up and, like, tortured with an iron and all that stuff that happened? For you know? days. Yeah. Yeah, I, it was days in a dungeon. Um, I was always getting a really kind of, like, mystified, though, with this show in particular, mm-hmm. because we, we also shot in my hometown. Okay. And we, like, Gabe's apartment was blocks away from my actual apartment uh, where I grew up. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the torture chamber ended up being a gutted out pizzeria that I used to eat at when I was a kid for years. That's so not creepy at it all. Was, it was really <laughs> strange all yeah, of a sudden yeah, being yeah. on this table, you know, on this, like, weird meta kind of uh, sensibility. But, I mean, it was... It's tough, you know. You're screaming. You're like, yeah. nah, 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 you're attached. It was cold. Yeah. But um, at the same time, it, it kind of made it easier in a way because yeah. you know the, the it, it looked so it looked real actually. When we walked in, I thought we were in like this real basement, and then like someone walked me over and was like, "You see that? It's actually plastic." And like, oh. yeah. It, this so. th- the show was shot really well. Mm-hmm. One more question about the show, and then we'll move on to something else because I'll talk to you on midnight about it. What um. Was there someone or a storyline that you watched, even though they all do intersect at the end, was there a storyline or an actor that you would have liked to interact more with that you didn't get a chance to based on what was happening in their storyline? Or, you know, were you happy with your trajectory and, you know, Mm -hmm. in that respect? I mean, I was happy with our trajectory. But, I mean, those are cool stories, and it did feel like, particularly uh, Gabe and Hannah's were on their own kind of mission separately. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we were completely out of the city, you know? Um, So I kind of was hoping that we would crisscross a little bit more. I would have a scene with Danielle, who's sort of the other younger character on the show. Uh, Or, um, uh, yeah, just like in that that world, you know? Or like even, yeah, I was going to say Nick's, but that's like part of Danielle's. And Mm -hmm. I mean, Jordan was going through their thing, but I can understand how they wanted to also isolate his really traumatic story with our own right and have that story in the middle that was very different you're probably one of the few people on the show that didn't actually interact with as many people because in the climax a lot of people were in where you were being the hotel upstairs yeah yeah yeah. and you were downstairs getting tortured yeah with the cherry gag now the show was picked up for a second (laughs) for a second season that's in the second season (laughs) yeah (laughs) the real truth comes out about dude (laughs) Is there a possibility that you would come back if they start racking up victims again and, and you get you, – you don't know. But there anything is a second is, season, anything so Anything is that's possible. I, I have a feeling they're – I mean, they're, they might want to do an anthology and uh-huh. you know introduce new characters, but anything is possible. Well, just like American Horror Story, they do new characters and they have the same actors, so – Right. Well, then what about like American Crime that then has like these new like things? I mean, they might have an overlap. There was not – I feel like it, it was really bookended, but at the same time, there were certain aspects that was sort of left in the open. So, But you do have the opportunity, at least, yeah. unlike a lot of your fellow co-stars. Mm, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there was a couple of ghosts that kept coming back, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, 2019 is going to be just as big a year for you as 2018 and the previous years. You have a bunch of films coming out this year. Mm. Why don't we uh, run down the list? You have uh, <laughs> Come Home. Yes. Yeah. The English-American horror film uh, shot with like a this like f- weird fashion aesthetic but it's like a psychological horror f- from the perspective of a little boy mm-hmm. so yeah uh, i look forward to that don't you do any like ro- something like summer oh, this was, was a little bit romance th- it was a little romance 2017 and that, that was just out. like coming out of the the comedy sci-fi action world of power rangers let's uh-huh. have a little romance with something like summer and then all of a sudden it was just like horror psychological thriller mm-hmm. terror one after the other i don't know what happened but it's yeah. cool they were all different projects very different characters but um, I mean, there is a relationship between Polaroid and 47, but that's another story. Go ahead. Go for it. Well, Take the reins. Well, Polaroid is another one of your movies coming yeah, out. Yeah, Polaroid. Uh, excited for that to come. Netflix acquired it, mm-hmm. and I look forward to, to seeing that. And it was such a great cast, and um, and Javier, who also played like the monster, was so amazing. So I look forward to seeing um, what, what was done with the, show, with the show, with the movie. Maybe you won't be so lucky in those projects to get Maybe out. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> now, 47 Meters Down, uh, Uncaged is a... 
is a sequel, right? Yeah, to a it's a film sequel. That was already right. Put out. Same director. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's the same DP, same company. Um, Mandy Moore is not in it. Uh, Why? What's she doing? Yeah, what's she doing? What's Mandy? <laughs> Mandy. She's got nothing going on. <laughs> yeah, you you subscribe and then you let us know. That's right. We can write you in. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so talk a little bit about that. What you know? What's your part in it? And don't spoil anything, obviously. Ah, but yes, what, yes, what can you say about it? Uh, we are so uh, it's the scuba divers uh, paradise, mm-hmm. and um, I work uh, with uh, with John's character, who's like um, a dad and a scuba diver and an archaeologist. Mm-hmm. So how cool! It's actually I, when I read the breakdown for the project, I was like, ah, oh, I would do this for a living, let alone like get to play it. It's one of those kind of wonderful scenarios. Yeah. They're they're investigating uh, an underwater Mayan ruin. So like, how cool! And um, the girls go in, and then it becomes sort of the like my job to help them get out, mm-hmm. you know, because I am working on the under the ruins with with John with John's character. Okay. Uh, yeah, but and they're less experienced, and so the crisis ensues as we're lost underwater. Now you made a uh, a brief mention of how you went from being a Power Ranger, you know, to martial arts and all that other stuff, to yeah. this love story in something like Summer. What was it like to switch gears? And and be in a film that the character had a bit of a confusing mm-hmm. story. Uh, mm-hmm. What was that like to, to jump into that role? Really refreshing. Yeah, uh, I'm a sucker for novelty. Mm-hmm. You know, so being able to go from that world where you know eight months of just superheroes, you know, which was a blast and I loved it, but then to be able to then first of all read a book mm-hmm. based on like the piece and like really get to look at it from that perspective. Right. And you know, it's about high school. It's about growing up. So it's also like really lovely to go from out there with like monsters and stuff and then right. kind of come home and um i mean to like jump into like self you know and, and think about like your life in, in a retrospective way and how it applies and be able to tell that kind of story so it was, it was nice it was really right. a refresher that's awesome and you know since you're not busy enough as an actor you also have your own company right yeah why don't we yeah. talk a little bit about that and what's going on with that comes with your company you know i, I think we discovered that we ha- are far more capable than what we assume ourselves to, to do and be and what's asked of us. Mm-hmm. So uh, w- with just the in, the intention of being creative, it, it originally just came from uh, a friend uh, sharing me like a script and then I gave him edits and then before I knew it, we were working on it and then he wanted to produce it and we did and then we were at Cannes Film Festival presenting it. So then we're like, all right, let's do a couple of more shorts. Yeah. And then we did a feature and, and that kind of blew up. The uh, creator of Dexter, uh, Jim Manos, like jumped on and... We had Luna, and uh, like, uh, and we also still got to tell a, a story about like the heroin epidemic, mm-hmm. and so it just suddenly felt like you can take charge of both things that you that are important to you in life, and you're able to execute all of these great mm-hmm. skill sets that you might not even have been doing otherwise. Right. So through Densely Hollow Films, uh, I collaborate with Christopher Lopez on a set of different scripts of different qualities, and get to create music as well, and music supervise and produce and mm-hmm. edit. So we've been producing as well as as, I mean, like, while we were doing uh, Rangers, it was really early on, um, but I was, like, Skyping with a musician in Paris while talking to Christopher, who was in New York, and I was in New Zealand time, and then we, you know, made that short happen. And Sounds like you thrive on being busy and, like, pulling, yeah. burning the candle at both ends. Yeah, that, for some people, that's really kind of when you, like, step up mm-hmm. for getting things done. It's when you don't have time to get anything done, yeah. you know, and you're, like, squeezing uh, your time for all it's worth and, and trying to do the best you can. So, yeah, I love being as busy and multi set it too, you know, so you don't have to do the same action. You're able to, to do it and it's rewarding. That's awesome. Davi, thank you so much for taking so much time with me. It has been an absolute pleasure. Like I said, I could speak to you till midnight. I don't know that anybody will watch a five hour interview, but you, never you, never, you do never know. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for taking time to meet thank up with you, me. It was, it's an absolute pleasure.